Hmm. <laughs> Have you seen this video? Sometimes my grandma would be like, Freddy, I don't like your tattoos. I'm like, I don't like you. Your grandma? <laughs> no. That's messed up. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> That's messed up. I wouldn't say that. I didn't ever say that. How dare you? But she constantly is offended by my tattoos. I'm like, I don't like them. Whatever. You're going to have to deal with this, not me. Like, get out of here, grandma. <laughs> That's terrible. I just pictured that happening. <laughs> I mean, the whole being offended thing is a. I, I feel like it's been a much bigger issue recently than it has been in the past. Like people are always offended, but it's not. They 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 weren't taking such like grand standards, you know, like grand stances on things. Well, the only grand stance they're taking is on the internet. They're not really doing much. Uh, no, no, no. You, okay. They have you protests. About everyone kneeling. Okay, well we can talk about that if you want. The NFL whole everyone kneeling, which is total hypocrisy. Total hypocrisy. Well, okay, not them kneeling per se, but the factor that now the NFL is offended. I don't know if I want to talk about that. Maybe we should. Um... Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm Frank. <laughs> I'm Jimmy. And yeah. yeah, what makes a man a monster? Uh, that's a good question. Is it probably when you shoot a bunch of people in a crowd? Um, yeah, that would make you a monster. But what makes you just get to that point? Like, what the fuck? You heard, we heard at our prayers, thoughts and prayers go out to the people in Las Vegas. But, fucking, what makes a person get to that edge that they would just open fire on a crowd of people? See, I don't, see, I, I've only found a little bit of information on this so far because I haven't really looked into it too much. But what makes, I think what makes this one a little bit different than some other shootings specifically is you're talking about a 64-year-old man, you know, so he's much older than the, than the previous shooters, the, the shooters that were, you know, uh, other active shooters, which to me, it, it, that does lead into questioning. I think it's ideologies, really, the, your, your perceptions and your beliefs, but I also believe that it's the actual direction that we're going right now. We have a lot of pent-up hate toward everything and everyone, that all it takes is one person saying, that's it, I've had enough, to decide I'm going to pick up a gun and start shooting people. I think he just wanted to do violent things for no reason. He might. He's just a pent up aggression. He's old. He's got nothing going for him. <coughs> he probably had, always had this violent little rage in him that he wanted to do something. Because he, he was in a hotel room. Like, he, it was nothing personal. He just a mass fucking shooting. Well, see, that's what I don't understand. Is the only information that I was given is that he checked into a hotel with a bunch of guns. Yeah. They know now, you know. Probably it was in his luggage or whatever. They right, because you can't. People going in and out of hotel rooms are constantly carrying bags of luggage. Right, you're not going to check you everything. Can't, you can't. Plus, it's like an invasion of privacy to a degree. But. Right, that's not the hotel's job to make people go through metal detectors. This was a this was a, this is an isolated incident. It's not connected to anything else. It's just right. one random dude. He's not part of any certain group or anything like but that. But I personally think that it shows, I think this specifically shows the amount of aggression that we have in this country. I think we're having more mass shootings, we're having more people uprising and okay. doing terrible things because of the, this bubble of anger that all everyone in general and the public is having a problem with. Created by the media. Laura's here. Oh yeah, it's Laura. What's up? What's up? Sorry, but he's gonna stay up here. It's gonna yell at me and tell me he's gonna stay up here. Why? Because uh, there's a possibility that he might still have fleas. So I'm trying to keep him out of the house. I don't want to. But I didn't have a choice for the bring. Alright. Sorry. <laughs> 
not going to eat you at that thing. I read an article that said, the people in America that have schizophrenia, they hear voices telling them to do violent, harmful things. But people in a different country, maybe Ethiopia, Africa, or maybe was it in South America somewhere, that people with schizophrenia there hear positive things from dead relatives. Okay. So that's like culturally based? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. I, I do believe that it's culturally based because uh, everything that we do is basically culturally based. You go to different countries and they have different everything. Us as Americans, we are pretty violent. Like whenever I get uncomfortable with something, I usually imagine fighting somebody. All right. That's that's your that's your ghost. Yeah, it's always, so you're angry it's always, and you're just like it's always, I gotta go beat something. It's up. always violence in my head going on. All right. It's always violence, and it's definitely not. From video games, because I haven't really played video games at all in the last couple of years. Well, you could make an argument that the video games that you played when you were a child made an impression on you at a younger age, but I don't. I honestly don't believe that video games make that impact. I, I do believe that if you're playing a violent video game, it will be more aggressive at that specific moment. I mean, maybe. It, Let, just look at kids in general, okay? If they get done watching the Ninja Turtles, what's going to happen? Story. They're going to pick up a broom and try to spin it around and be like Ninja Turtle, become more aggressive. Not necessarily because of it. Uh, uh, of the aggression part of it, but just that they want to emulate. There's a lot of moving around, jumping around, moving around. Everyone wants to be Ninja Turtles. I was at a wedding, yeah, and there were Ninja Turtles on the cake. That's awesome. It is pretty cool. It's awesome. The groom loves Ninja Turtles, and the bride was like all for it because she. It's a lot of fun. I got super drunk, yeah. off a red wine, and danced a lot, which I don't fucking normally do. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been drunk off of red wine. No, I, you're the second person to tell me that today. I don't think I've ever been drunk off a red wine. But, like, you see it. I, I see, you know, wine in general. Specifically, it's the red wine that you see in, like, movies and stuff when they're going back in the day. You know, they got them. And it, it, like, uh, you know, Roman Empire, Egyptian time. Well, you probably like don't that. drink it fast enough. I'm sure you sit Oh, I certainly. Fuck. I have troubles getting drunk, period, because I don't drink enough. Yeah, you don't drink fast enough. And I don't drink fast enough, right. I, I've always had that problem. Yeah. I have troubles just drinking in general, like drinking water. I, I don't drink enough of it. I don't drink enough of anything. I'll go all day long on like a can of Pepsi and a bottle of water. And that's all I'll have all day long. You know, you're supposed to have like eight, eight ounce glasses of water or whatever. And Every like, morning I wake up and I drink a glass of water. That's the first thing I do. Well, no, when I walk downstairs, that's the first thing I do. Whoa, whoa, glass whoa, whoa. You put some clothes on, I would hope, would be the first thing that you do. Once I get downstairs, the first thing I do is go to the yeah, kitchen right. and drink a glass of water. I'm just saying, I hope you're not walking this downstairs is, This is dressed, naked. showered. <laughs> you know what the first thing I do when I brush, you know, brush my teeth? I was going to say when I wake up and go to the bathroom and brush my teeth. Mm. I answered it. <laughs> there was a guy I met at this wedding. Uh, he was part of the groomsmen, and he was also an ex-marine, mm -hmm. and he was talking marine stuff, and he had some fucking burn marks on his face. Oh, yeah. And he was missing, like, these two fingers. Mm -hmm. and there were some burn marks. And at first I was like, all right, just, you know, just be cool with talking marine stuff, but don't ask him about it. Mm -hmm. Just let it go. But then I got drunk, and I'm like, hey, what the fuck happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways... Well, we're both Marines. We were late. He was fine. It's not like I offended him or anything. Well, yeah. But uh, he understood. And apparently it had nothing to do with combat. He told me, like, he was in Malaysia partying and he electrocuted himself. And he doesn't remember it at all. And he was in a coma and he woke up in his hometown, which is Texas. Shit. Party hard, huh? That's fucking gnarly. <laughs> yeah. Like, goddamn. Yeah, that's sad. That's a pretty, that's a pretty uh, crazy story. I didn't realize you could, electricity that fucking gnarly. Like, I don't even understand what the fuck they even touch. Is it playing on generators? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know if. Um, I gotta guess the wiring in Malaysia is probably not the greatest either. You probably just like plug something into the fucking outlet or something that was nah, an exposed nah, wire. No, nah, I was in Malaysia. Oh, yeah? I stayed at a hotel. Everything was fine. Oh, okay. You do need an adapter though, because you don't know this. Their outlets are fucking different. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, I had to get an outlet adapter. Yeah. 
God, is this thing, this thing's gonna pick up this fucking dog whining. Thanks, Laura! Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? You're talking about electrocution in Malaysia. How it happened. I was just thinking how. No, he had to be fucking with something else. Oh no, okay. So, electricity. I don't know if this is real or we just saw it in a movie. I've probably seen it in a movie <laughs> where some fucking jihabs. Some fucking towel heads. They were doing a thing, and the, the one guy was telling the child, the child to climb the telephone pole and to touch the thing because if he was truly one with God, that God would protect him. And he climbs the pole what? and he grabs it, and it fucking obviously electrocutes him and it shoots him to the ground and he dies. <laughs> See, well, maybe it cripples him. I don't know if he dies. Probably now all I'm picturing is Jurassic Park. Is a fucking they... movie? No, all I'm picturing is Jurassic Park when they're climbing over the electric fence. And he's like, he grabs a hold of it. Just kidding. You know, and the little boy's like hanging on. And yeah, he that's the fucking thing on, yeah. yeah. Have you ever been watching here? Uh, a few times, but nothing serious. Nothing serious? No. At work, I uh, have these reels. And I have to take out the cellophane, the plastic. Mm. And it builds up a static charge. And if I don't take my knife out mm. and touch the metal, when I go to touch it, it'll shock. It'll shock me. It'll yeah. a good jolt where I'm like, fuck, I have to remember to keep doing this. <laughs> Damn it, that <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. No, I mean, yes, I had, you know, kids play with dog collars, shock collars, you know, and you, you get shock oh, electricity geez. that way. Those things suck. I did put one of those on and walk yeah. out to the line, and it's just like, yeah, okay, yeah, nope. Yeah, right. I see why this dog doesn't like that. I put one on my wrist. You know? <laughs> And just to see no, how yeah, it was, it's yeah, like, yeah. ah, fuck. I did that too. I No, I probably didn't do it on my neck. I probably just did, right, I yeah. probably just did it on the wrist, yeah. Yeah, no, that <laughs> was kind of one of those, uh, our dog, Bailey, Yeah. Uh, you know, when we still had her, uh, she would jump across this line, and I'd hit it, and I mean, I kept going all the way up to 10, you know, and now I'm at 10 and I'm hitting her, and I'm seeing her as she's hopping, her legs are shaking, and then she hits the ground. And she just keeps running. Like she was just like, "F you, man." And I'm like, "Is it really getting it that bad? Like, is she really feeling it that much to where it's making her, you know, her balls shake?" And and then the other question is, is why would you keep going after that? Like, would... she never learned with child, and she never learned. And after I got it all the way up to ten, and I'm on ten, and I tried it the one time, and I saw her legs shake, and I'm like, "No, okay, no." I know. I remember. Uh... There was a dog. It was my grandma's dog. We had the shot color and the thing, the lines and stuff. I remember it, it wasn't working. And I think he knew it, but he was trying to pretend. And I remember he ran up to where like the line was. Mm -hmm. And then he made like a like a howl or a bark and this weird like fake thing like he was pretending it hurt. And then he just kept going. <laughs> but it was totally not working. It was weird. <laughs> I watched a video recently. It's weird, like, how many different animals do strange things. But there was this video of this person feeding a snake every day. The snake would come out of the water and crawl up on their deck, and they would feed the snake a fish. And it would come down. The lady said it was every day that the snake would come back just to get, just to get fed. I thought it was weird. Ah, this is, uh... <laughs> A mother tiger lost her cubs due to premature label. She became depressed and her health declined. Zoologists wrapped piglets in a tiger print cloth and presented them to the mother tiger. Mm. The tiger now loves these pigs and treats them like her babies. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. They're little pigs. Yeah. That is a tiger. Yeah. The tiger is going to eat those fucking pigs. Nope. I, I really nope. kind of wish it would. <laughs> Why? That's know. messed up. Because it's like, wait a minute, bacon? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Really, bacon? You want bacon? This fucking pig has not no pig. idea how close to death it is. Not pigs in a blanket? <laughs> no, see, this pig is in a blanket. I think the, the, the whole right, but I think I think the whole like mother thing, you know, like she wanted cubs to take care of, and she didn't get the cubs that she wanted, and so now she's got a replacement. No matter what it was. Uh, they could have probably gotten anything. I, I think they wrapped it in the, the, the tiger skin because they were probably hoping, you know, that the mother would, would imprint with them or whatever. I, I don't know. I, like, I'm gonna need you to chill the fuck out. I'm not gonna put anything on there. 
I'm always putting stuff up on here. Um, a Freudian slip. Do you know what a Freudian slip is? Yeah, it's when you say something uh, that you didn't mean to say that slipped out from a thought you were having inside of your mind. Something along those lines. Yeah, it's something about like the certain things you think about, but like you're, you're constantly editing yourself and like everything you're thinking about is not being spoken, but sometimes it's. Right, it's kind of like writing through a filter to a degree. Yeah. And I think that the most. That I could I could fully understand that or, or not fully understand it, but the, the, I guess I guess the best example that I could think of is when a kid comes up to you and is like you know punches you in the shoulder or you know, happens to hit you in the nuts and you're like oh you know and you're like crap and you want to be like Fuck you motherfucker <laughs> but it's a child you know it's like it's all right buddy it's okay. My example was different. I yeah. guess my example is going to be more like when a girl comes up to me and I could have known for long. She's like. Oh, Frank, we're such good friends. I'm so glad we're such good friends. And I'd be like, yeah, me too. I just want to hold you down and fuck you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> snap. That's a Freudian slip. Uh, that might be a little further than a Freudian slip. No, it totally is. Because in my mind, I was like, yeah, just friends. No, I don't want to be just friends. <laughs> You're hot. And that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> All right. I thought that was a good example. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, shouldn't think about that for everybody now. All your good girlfriends. Or good friends that are girls. I don't know. Everyone hot. It's one point across. That's that, uh... Over there. That's that, uh, you know, deep-seated porn you've been watching. Probably. <laughs> your entire life. <laughs> Dude, seriously, I've been watching porn. For, for a long time. Fucking years. Right? <laughs> if I ever get into a relationship, they have to understand that I'm not, I just can't drop that. <laughs> Come on, we're together. Don't you just want me? You, you gotta know, find somebody to watch it together with part, you. It's part of who I am at this point. Like, it's not just something I can give up. Like, sure. Like, <laughs> It'd be harder for me. To give up porn would be to quit smoking, I think. Yeah? You think it's that bad? Mm hmm Huh. You could call it an addiction. It's probably some sort of addiction. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you get a pleasurable release. I mean, it's gotta be an addiction of sorts. It's no worse than smoking. Hey, many the ashtray. God damn. <laughs> Can I smoke too? No, you're not allowed. What if I... No, seriously, I'm not trying to, I'm going to be trying to fucking quit these things again. Dude, I think quitting smoking is like everyone says all easiest the and hardest thing happens. to do ever. Like, you know, I, I read a, a quote from somebody that quitting smoking is the easiest thing they've done. They must have done it a thousand times. And the reality is that that's pretty much true, but... No, I really need to quit these. And stuff. You know, I think I'm stubborn enough to do it. Uh, one of them, one of them was explaining the Constitution. It's a little boring, you know, a little dry per se, but it was explaining like our perception of the Constitution and you know, like the Bill of Rights and like what gives us our freedoms is actually not true at all, and that it's caused an erosion of the freedoms that were originally intended in the Constitution. But people don't even really know the Constitution, so that we're constantly messing it up. And they were giving an example of like. Uh, the over overreach that the government now has claiming that we have to like for the Obamacare you're basically stating that the government is telling every American citizen that they have to pay for a product and that's not what it was intended for it was that the, the federal government was supposed to only be in control of specific areas in our lives and nowadays you can't do anything without sometimes government being in control of you everywhere you know so it was, it was kind of a you have to watch the video to like understand that. Boring. It is boring, but it's one of those things that you know. I don't know shit about nothing, you know. I was watching. Um, I was thinking about something, and then watching things about Trump starting off whatever nonsense he does. <laughs> and I was saying, uh, if he was a cartoon character, 
Like, what cartoon character do I think he most likely related to? And I couldn't help but think that he was more like Zach Brannigan from Futurama. Really? Yeah. That guy's like oblivious and always spouting up nonsense, and he's always really proud of him, <coughs> the decisions that he makes, and I feel like Trump's that same kind of character. I, I could see that. I, I mean, I could see that to a degree. I don't, I don't know if I'd actually necessarily state that all together. I don't really, to be honest with you, I don't really don't pay attention to what's going on between, you know, Trump and the, the rest of the stuff that's happening, because I think the worst part about it is, is we're not really informed very well. We have so many different outlets to get information, but it's all with some type of a corporate agenda. You know, the media has some type of agenda. Like, why are they telling us this news? Is it because they actually want us to know the information, or are they making a profit off of it? And when you look at it, majority well, yeah, of the news sources are making a profit. something to tell you. Well, that's not that, that's not true. I mean, you want the actual like truth, truth, and not anything about ratings. Go get a newspaper, and a lot of times newspapers aren't competing. They can't compete with the regular media. And you'll find some, you know, you'll you'll find some relatively decent information. But how is it that you can watch like CNN and and, and Fox News, and they have the exact same story but completely different, like completely different outcomes? And they're saying the same thing and supposedly giving us the accurate information, but they're both contradicting each other in the same statement. Yeah, I don't know. I don't watch news stories. So, and that is just... Hey, that, remember that guy that electrocuted himself? He also told... He's from Texas. And there was that flooding down there? He yeah. said he took his boat out to go help some people. You know, he used to live in Texas, right? And he got him on his... He was there for the flood... On For a boat, and he was rescuing people. That's awesome. He said it was sketchy. He was saying some parts were sketchy because it's got the motor in it, mm. and there's this one dam broke and it was causing a real large uh, current. And he's like, he was trying to get these people in and like kind of keep them away from the rotors. And mm -hmm. but it was cool. I think he was a cool guy. Probably party too much. <laughs> yeah, you think so? Yeah. Fuck you, electrocute yourself like that. God damn. <clears throat> Have you ever seen Kyrie Peterson videos? No, I haven't. Kyrie Peterson is like a, a Steve Irwin type. He goes with the animals and stuff. Oh, okay. I have not seen. He's got this thing where he uh, purposely gets stung by these gnarly uh, insects. Really? Yeah. Who decides that's what they're going to want to do with their life? I don't know. <laughs> I want to get poisoned by everything possible and then get the antidotes for it. But that's messed up. I don't know if he exactly gets poisoned. Like, it hurts, but it's not... I don't think he uh, goes for, like, deadly shit. <laughs> what are you hopping to now? I don't know. I thought... Oh, you sent me that video! Holy crap, that's where dreams come from. A flying scorpion? That's where nightmares come from right there. What was that? A flying scorpion? Uh, Those things are real? Scorpion flies exist. It's a gnarly looking... That is creepy. It looks like it's got a gnarly, crazy stinger thingy. Like a scorpion. But it's not really... It's not their... Um, they don't sting. It's actually just their genitals. What? They use it to latch on to the female. It's not deadly at all. Okay, so they don't, they don't sting you then? No. So they just, but they look creepy as they hell. They look flying creepy around. as hell, yeah. That's just, that's creepy. And then it said that uh, forensic uh, analysis use it on dead bodies and stuff to date how long the person's been dead for. What? They can use it for... Like the, scorp the, the scorpion flies like go in there and they start eating the body? Yeah, like... They can, like a decomposing body. Right, yeah, right, yeah like right. there's like maggots or like it's evolving and they can use scorpion flies to date, like alright, the huh. body's been dead for three days. Well, okay, alright, you know, like the ecosystem, yeah. like how long it takes before they get attracted to eat whatever. But these scorpion flies do look scary. That's but creepy they're harmless as hell. to people. Ooh, uh, I heard Marilyn Manson got hurt by a prop at a show. Something fell on him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Snap. I like Marilyn Manson. Uh, not a big fan. I like his music. I so, don't some of his music's okay. Some of his music's alright. 
Gotta push that edge. It's a shock locker. Hell yeah. Anyways. Anyways. Yeah, goodbye. Peace out. <laughs>